Cyril Jurassic has scored 13 goals in the first seven Bundesliga games, but it's not just that stat that catches your eye, but also the manner of how Jurassi is scoring these goals. Once you watch the first 10 of these goals this season, it's obvious that Jurassic is something. Some of these finishes are rifled in with the confidence of a prolific world-class striker, whilst his movement to create these chances for himself is almost textbook, whether it's holding and bending his run to stay onside as he makes a run in behind the back line into a 1v1 position, or just using a double movement inside of the box to spring away from a marking defender in order to receive a cross or a cutback in a dangerous goal-scoring position. And last season, he also showed he was a capable aerial threat as well, but it's in the last two months where Garassi seems to be putting his name amongst the best in Europe. But why exactly is this? But before I go any further, remember to subscribe to the channel and check out my Patreon podcast which will be linked below, but also if you want cheap good quality football jerseys for the new season or retro jerseys from the past 40 years, then check out jerseyfever.com, a link will be in my Instagram bio, and if you use coupon code Atlantis, you should get a discount as well. I'll leave my Instagram at the top of the description and comment section and a link will be in my Instagram bio. Now I will admit on hearing Cyril Garassi has burst onto the scene out of nowhere and is putting up Erling Haaland level numbers in the Bundesliga at the start of the season, you immediately wonder how old he is. Is he 19 or 20? Signed from France after a good bit of scouting from Stuttgart allowed them to uncover a gem. Or did he fly under the radar and is now 23 and he's finally getting the recognition he deserves? Well, it's kind of neither, to be honest. Cyril Garassi is 27, 28 in March, and to be honest, before his first loan move to Stuttgart in the summer of 2022, which was made permanent in the summer, he really wasn't a standout striker, even in his mid-20s. Garassi was initially signed for 1 million euro by Lille back in July 2015, when the Guinean international was just 19, but he wouldn't break through managing only 8 appearances for the first team, and so he would instead go to Cologne in Germany, where he would struggle with injury and would eventually get relegated with the club. Even when he then went on loan to Amiens in January 2019 for the second half of the season, he still only managed 3 goals in 13 league 1 games as a 23 year old. But Amiens would take the chance on him signing him permanently from Cologne for a fee reported to be between 5 and 6 million euros. And in the 2019-2020 season, Garassi's goal scoring output would start to pick up, as despite Amiens being relegated from Ligue 1 and the season ending abruptly due to COVID-19, Garassi picked up 9 goals in 23 games. And this would earn the 24-year-old a move to Rennes, where in his debut season he'd pick up 10 goals in 27 Ligue 1 games, and the following season it was 9 in 37. And so even when Jurassic did make the initial loan move to Stuttgart in the summer of 2022 as a 26-year-old, he really wasn't considered anything more than a solid top 5 European league level striker. But last season we would start to see that change as Jurassic picked up a more than decent 11 goals and 4 assists in 22 Bundesliga games and has taken his goal scoring to a completely different level this season with 14 goals in his first 8 games in all competitions, 13 in his first 7 Bundesliga games this season as well. Now I anticipate the first comment that people are going to make is that he might be a one season wonder and that is a valid argument even though I tend to hate this argument in most situations. I guess the fact that he is 27 and not a fresh faced 20 or 21 year old who has suddenly started to show signs of developing into a world class striker doesn't really help him as the obvious question is what was stopping him reach the level that he is now showing this season? Well if I had to sum it up briefly Girassi was first rather unlucky with injury, whilst also featuring for two pretty poor sides who eventually got relegated, and then when he did get the chance to move to a better side with Rennes in France, he was able to increase his goal scoring rate to what was actually a rather impressive level. And we can see it here by looking at Girassi's FB ref report from his debut 2020-21 season in Ligue 1 with Stade Rennes. You can see that he actually has a non-penalty goals per 90 rate, in the top 25% of all league and forwards this season, with his non-penalty XG being in the top 15%, and he actually overperforms his non-penalty XG by a fairly stable 0.03 per 90. Alongside this, just from a glance at his FB ref report, you can also see that he's a pretty decent all-round forward, but the issue was he only played 1,111 minutes, largely down to injuries and suspensions. But it was the following season in 21-22, still at Rennes in Ligue 1, where Jurassic, at least from a statistical point of view, first begins to un- unravel the talent that is now on full display. 
He ranked in the top 1% of all league and forwards for his non-penalty goals and his non-penalty XG per 90, whilst also sitting in the mid 90th percentiles for his pass completion and his touches in the opposition box. The trouble was, once again, he only played just over a thousand minutes in the league, with Martin Terrier and Gaetan Lebald keeping Garassi out of the team. But despite not being a starting striker for Wren, by the conclusion of the 21-22 season, Garassi had scored at a rate of one league goal every 144 minutes since the start of the prior campaign, and that was better than players such as Victor Ossimen, Neymar, Hyung Min Son and Harry Kane, and only marginally worse than Lionel Messi himself. And so it would have been at this point in Garassi's career when ideally a Premier League side would have tried to pick him up, but instead he flew under the radar again, moving to Stuttgart on a season-long loan before eventually making it permanent last summer. And when you look at Jurassic's FB ref report from the last 365 days, when compared against every other forward in Europe's top 5 leagues, he ranks in the 99th and the 98th percentile respectively for his non-penalty goals and his non-penalty XG, which he overperforms by an insane 0.25 per 90. That means if you were to apply that goal scoring rate to a 40 game season in all competitions, Jurassic would score 10 non penalty goals more than the XG model suggests he should. Now, obviously, this goal scoring overperformance is not sustainable in the long run. Maybe he can do it for a season, but overperforming your non penalty XG when playing 40 plus games a season is tough enough, let alone doing it by 0.25 per 90, something only really the likes of Lewandowski, Messi, Haaland, and Mbappe have done this decade. So why do I think Garassi should be a target for Manchester United, particularly with Hoyland already being signed in the summer? Well for me I think it's obvious that United need another centre forward who is capable of getting between 15 and 20 Premier League goals, as Martial for me is completely done and should have left in the summer. Whilst Rashford seems to have a strange inability to play competently as a central forward, and so that leaves the 20 year old new signing who wasn't even a guaranteed starter for Atalanta last season as United's only real capable striker. But I also think that Hoyland would benefit from being the understudy to a more senior centre forward, taking the goal scoring pressure off his shoulders, whilst also providing United with a different option in certain games, such as the game against Burnley at Turf Moor, where Hoyland probably would have benefited from starting on the bench and then coming on after. 60 or 65 minutes, whilst in other games where maybe there's a greater need for United to have speed in behind the back line rather than a deeper line forward to link the play between the lines, Hoyland could be the better option for those types of games. Now some may say that bringing in an elite level centre forward would halt Hoyland's progress, but I don't think this would be the case at all. This is Manchester United, two top level goal scoring centre forwards should always be the minimum, maybe even a third who is a more experienced poacher as well. Every Manchester United forward, whether it's Andy Cole and Dwight York with Sheringham and Solskjaer, or Rooney and Ronaldo with Tevez and Berbatov, needs to have top level competition, and Hoyland is the exact same. But is Garassi that striker? Well, personally, I want to see Garassi until January to see if he can maintain this form. However, it's hard to not get excited when you see a striker with such textbook movement, cultured technique, and ice cold finishing. You can see through his second goal against Bochum earlier on in the season that he initially starts ahead of the centre back in an offside position as a Stuttgart midfielder carries a ball into Bochum's half. And obviously, I can't be sure if this is intentional, but this starting position stops the centre back being able to get goal side. If Garassi instead holds a deeper position, the centre back can get tight to him and goal side, enabling him to block or track Garassi's movement in behind a lot easier. So the initial positioning allows him to get goal side and in between the two centre backs, but from here, in order to get back on side for the pass, he has to then curve his run, bending in behind the left sided centre back and well ahead of the right sided centre back on the far side as well. And the run and the pass are perfectly in sync and weighted to perfection, releasing Garassi in a 1v1 inside of the box in a far from simple shooting angle, but the strike is textbook hard and low across the keeper into the far corner, nestling the ball into the side netting. His first goal against Mainz also showed his off the ball movement, first being able to identify where he should position himself in relation to the ball, but then also having elite level composure when he receives the ball around the box and a significantly underrated attribute having the ability to not just get the ball under control, but also be able to shift the ball into a shooting position efficiently, and once again we see his clinical shooting with a rifle drive into the keeper's near post. And like his goal against Bochum, his second against Mainz was also giving me prime Porto and Atletico Madrid Falcao vibes, as his movement here is incredible. He sees the cross is about to come in, 
and recognises that this is the area between the keeper and the defender where the goal is to be had but rather than just making a straight vertical run towards that space, making it simple for the defender to get goal side and cut off the cross, Garassi instead looks to manipulate the defender's positioning, making a dummy run towards the ball, forcing the defender to hold his position before Garassi springs off into the six yard box to put home a classic poacher's goal that Radamel Falcao would have been proud of. Garassi would not just bring movement in behind the back line, having the pace, positional understanding and timing of a run that would be a dream for Bruno Fernandes, but he'd also provide the ability to score from a variety of different situations, whether it's on the edge of the box, with a first time strike from a cross or a cutback, a 1v1 centrally or from a wide position in the box, or from a header which he did multiple times last season. I also think his link up play is very good as well, he's able to link play with a number of short sharp passes, he has the physical strength to play with his back to goal, he's also got the agility to turn away from defenders and he's actually got a decent long pass as well which he often uses when he drops deep and then looks to switch to play. Now he's certainly not as good as someone like Harry Kane in a deeper lying forward position but for me this is a part of Hoyland's game which he does lack at the moment, he certainly has the upper body strength to hold off defenders and back into them, but I often feel he gets too much into the tussle with the defender and isn't able to fully get the ball out of his feet to then link the play. I do think Garassi is much better at doing this, so in games where United do need a centre forward to drop off, link play but also open up space ahead of them, Garassi could be the better option than Hoyland. But I guess with any Manchester United signing, it's going to come down to price. And to be honest, United could be in luck. As when Garassi signed with Stuttgart this summer, he only signed a three-year deal, meaning that his current deal expires in 2026, meaning he'll have just two years left on his contract come the summer. And so I think if United were able to land him for between 50 and 60 million pounds, that would be a fantastic deal, as you're getting a 28-year-old striker who's still got a number of years ahead of him, who's probably already in their prime, has already shown that he is capable of putting up very high goal scores numbers and it's not just this season as his per 90 goal scoring rate does indicate a player who has been improving substantially over the years and right now is coming into his peak and I do think he deserves a big move and United need an experienced striker for me it just seems like a perfect fit but I will be going over other options such as Victor Boniface, maybe Victor Osimhen, Gift Orban, players like that. So if you do want to see those types of videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel, click the bell so you do get notified when they come out, and check out some of my other videos which will be in the description below.